Shabbat Shalom, everyone. May the Lord protect and defend you. May God always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining man. So as I told Samson when we met a year, over a year ago, Today's Parsha, Parshat Naso, is actually my bat mitzvah Parsha as well. And I, I did the math this morning and realized it's been 30 years since my bat mitzvah, which is a long time. And uh, some of you know I grew up modern Orthodox. And so um, I did have a bat mitzvah in my community. I offered a drosh. I was pelted with candy. At the time, they were still Jordan almonds, those really hard candies which would go over very poorly here. They changed that, thank God. Um, and I had a party, uh, but it was very different than, than, than this. And this is one of the things that was coming up for me as I was reading through our Parsha, because our Parsha includes Birkat Kohanim, as we heard earlier, the priestly blessing. And one of the memories, the really strong memories I have of growing up in the community that I was in, um, was that our practice was to hear Birkat Kohanim, the priestly blessing, offered by Kohanim in the community, people priests, male, descendants of Aharon, Moshe's brother, every single Shabbat. And so I remember before my bat mitzvah, when I was younger, being with my dad, and part of the practice was that the, the Kohanim would leave the room, they would get themselves ready, they would wash hands and feet, and they would make their way back in, put their talitot over their heads from the front of the room, and begin the prayer and the blessing, and all of us would close our eyes, we would sort of look somewhere else, and, and my dad would put his talit overhead and I would just stand under it. So these memories coming back. And it made me think also of another, another incredible moment of Birkat Kohanim, which is for anybody who has been in Israel at the Kotel, um, on Chol HaMoed, the intermediary days of Sukkot and Pesach, when thousands and thousands of people pack into that area, and uh, they hear and recite Birkat Kohanim. Hundreds of priests stand together and chant these ancient words of the priestly blessing. It's truly a sight to behold. One thing that I wasn't aware of <laughs> on my bat mitzvah 30 years ago uh, was that pride celebrations were about to, to start. Not as many as we have today. Um, it would take me a long time after that point um, to even begin to acknowledge being gay, let alone to be able to stand up and talk about it here and to celebrate it and to, to, really, to really embody and to understand that word pride. So these are some of the things that were coming up for me and that I'm holding as I'm standing here before all of you uh, thinking about all of these intersections. So what is the blessing? What are the components of the blessing that we read today, that we recite, that these kohanim are offering in some communities every single day in this chant? Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, may God bless you and keep or protect you. Often understood as a blessing about this world, about the material possessions or about security. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha vichuneka, may God shine God's face upon you and be gracious to you. Perhaps a blessing of spiritual connectedness, of inspiration. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs offers, maybe we read this as, may God's presence be evident to you. Isa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom, may God lift up God's face to you and grant you peace. A blessing for compassion, for favor, for wholeness, for harmony. So what is the role that the Kohanim, the priests, are playing in this blessing process? The Torah very clearly wants them to be the ones doing it. God says to Moshe, saying, speak to Aaron and his children, saying, that repetition telling us it's not just a one-time thing, it's generation after generation, and it has been happening for hundreds of years in exactly the same way. This is how you shall bless 
the B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, say this. And Rashi says, make sure they can all hear it. But there is a danger in having an intermediary offering us God's blessing. We don't always get the words we need from the mouths of the right people. And in some ways, the priestly blessing, the rituals surrounding it, are the perfect example of how this could go wrong. How many religious leaders feel that they can proclaim who is and isn't worthy of blessing as if they have the power of blessing, not God? I would call that blasphemy. How heartbreakingly easy is it, especially when we receive messages as children, to believe that someone claiming religious grounding for their homophobia has any claim at all on who God loves and cherishes? Especially, especially when we are children hearing those messages. And what comes from a bima, whatever faith bima that might be, from religious leadership, from people who have a stage using religion to spout homophobia, that will necessarily find its way into the home. The priestly blessing is something that has also found its way beautifully into our homes every single Friday night. And yet we know, we know that sadly there are parents who are offering these very words every week who are unable to also honor the fullness of who their children are, sometimes using gendered language that the tradition offers, which is different than what those children have told them their gender is. So what is the role of the Kohanim here? Our tradition was quick to clarify. They are not the bestowers of blessing. They are merely God's representatives in this moment. In fact, the last words of this section of our Torah, a brief section, says, Vesamu et shmi al b'nei Israel, they shall link my name with the people of Israel, va'ani avarchem, and I, I, God, will bless them. The Kohanim are not the ones bestowing blessing, they are the ones who are implementing, who are sharing God's words of blessing with the people. You, Kohanim, I'm allowing you this role and this gift. You get to stand up there, God is saying, but only if you are representing me and my love for all my children. That love is really at the heart of it all. In fact, the blessing that the Kohanim say before reciting Birkat Kohanim is, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, blessed are you, Adonai, ruler of the universe, Asher Kiddushanu B'Kiddushato Shel Aharon, who has sanctified us with the holiness of Aharon, very different than the usual bracha we say, who has made us holy because of Aharon, famously a lover of peace and a pursuer of peace. And it ends, V'tzivanu Levarech et Amo Yisrael Be'ahava, and has commanded us to bless God's people Be'ahava, with love. It's really unusual to have a mitzvah, to have a commandment where the emotion, the intention is built in as a necessity. It is essential that the Kohanim are expressing love when they are blessing the people because that is what God needs them to express for it to be authentic to God's blessing. Love is required. Perhaps it's because it's so dangerous to place a person in the position of speaking as God's voice, of sharing God's words. And we see that. We see the devastating damage to individuals, to families, to our country that occurs when religious leadership is speaking not from a place of love, but a place of bigotry and hate. The Zohar teaches, La rachim la'ama, o ama la rachim lei. A person, a Kohen, who does not love the people or whom the people do not love may not bless the people. A Kohen, a religious leader, whose words and actions are not rooted in love of God's people and who is not loved by them may not 
claim to speak God's message to those people lest we believe that God approves. God does not. As we're kicking off LGBTQ plus Pride Month, I think it's imperative upon us as a faith community to also focus on the healing that needs to be done because of faith communities. Now in our community, we don't do a public recitation of Birkat Kohanim, but maybe if we did, maybe you see where I'm going with this today, it would offer a counterpoint to the experience that other queer folk are experiencing in countless shuls around the world, whether that's today or on holidays. And what if we offered children and also the millions of adults carrying the pain of that rejection by religion a chance to hear God's blessing offered to them in wholehearted, embracing love. So I'm gonna ask you to join me today in hopes that our voices as a gorgeous community of religion and of love and embrace can echo out to anyone in this room who needs this blessing and also to anyone beyond who might hear it actually or feel that there is a community that loves them and us for exactly who we are. So I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Adonai Veishmerecha Ya'er Adonai Panav Eilecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai Panav Eilecha Veyaseh Lecha Shalom Amen.